Hello again, everybody. My name is John D. Healy. I do a podcast. It's called It's Good to Talk. Don't know me because I produced this book, and that's how it all started. But my friend Stoney McGurney's life story from 1941 up until recently. And it's on audio too, and you can buy it on Amazon. My sponsors are Diffie Van Lines, a moving company here in New York City. And they've been around longer than Jeopardy, almost 50 years. Lots of experience when it comes to moving that Cliffy do the lifting. So getting back to the many podcasts I've done in the past year, so many, probably over 90 podcasts. And people ask me what topics and so on and so forth. So I'm going to make it easy today and do a brief summary of each one or most of them at least. So if you like music, you get music. If you like health and wellness, you get health and wellness. If you like real estate and law, you get that. I did a lot on history this year because it was the 25th, 25 year anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement. I went back with my historian on board, Brian Layden, to talk about the East Horizon. Uh, Mike Collins, the treaty in 1922, and we make comparisons between that and the Good Friday Agreement. I'll talk about that at the end of the podcast because I do have an important comment to make about the United Ireland, and I, I think you find it uplifting. Anyways, let's start today, and we'll start with music, okay? So, one of the first guys I interviewed, Charlie McGettigan, and he won the Eurovision Song Contest in 1994 with a song called Rock and Roll Kids. So on that interview, Charlie was very generous with his time and knowledge, and he explained how he came up the ranks to win various other smaller contests, but then to win the European con competition, the European Song Contest. And Charlie is from Drumshambo, and he's a beautiful down-to-earth guy. And when he won his Eurovision Song Contest, he went back to his day job, more or less. So he enjoys the music, but he enjoys his regular work. And he's still writing songs and he's still gigging around Ireland. So that's Charlie McGettigan, and he also has a book out. Another guy I interviewed is Ernie Savage. Ernie is a good friend of mine here in Manhattan. Ernie writes, he's a songwriter, he's a musician, he plays piano and among other instruments, and he also writes jingles. So you can check Ernie out on my podcast, and you can also Google him, Ernie Savage, but check him out on my podcast first. Other people I interviewed in the music world, John Malone, is about town here too in Manhattan. John is an Irish guy. He does cover songs. He does them in a, in a unique way of kind of ad-libbing his own lyrics into them here and there. Humorous. I've seen him on stage a number of times, and he is very interesting. In the same vein, I should mention, when it comes to entertainment, Ed Malone is an Irish guy again. He is a professional clown. Yes, you may ask what's a professional clown. He actually went to Clown University, and there is a university in Paris if you want to study to be a clown, or if you're like me, you were born natural clown, then you don't need to go to Paris. Anyway, so that's Ed, Ed Malone. He's going to be featuring in a movie coming up soon, so check out that podcast, Ed Malone. Let me see who else am I in here in music. I should mention Steve. It's a springtime band, and that's on the list too. And they played at Gracie Mansion uh, last year outdoor. about. 25, 30 people in a old uh, band of brass instruments of that. And Steve is the conductor. So you can look up that podcast too. They have a lot of outdoor gigs going on and well worth checking them out. And it's an enjoyable evening. I hope it's coming up again this year because I enjoyed it last year. Now in the hope world of music again, let me see before I move on. to Tony Daniels and Gary Troy. Did I mention them? They're a combo of both music and comedy okay so they're interesting too that was a very funny enjoyable and they're songwriters and comics okay i said that Mildred Byrne is a dance teacher music teacher in ireland and good friend also i know for many 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 years she got into the guinness book of records one time she had the biggest smallest Kelly band in the world which means she had about 100 kids playing instruments together so she was able to get into the Guinness Book of Records. Very talented lady, very dedicated. She also features on Midwest Radio. I'll come back to that later on. Midwestradio.ie if you want to tune in to Mildred, whatever schedule is there. But it's lots of music and sports on Midwest Radio. Now, Paddy McCarthy of the Irish Examiner. Paddy McCarthy is the editor of the Irish Examiner.usa. His background life is mostly music, actually. Which was a total surprise to me because I thought we were going to be talking about boring uh, paper ads and paper news and all that. 
But no, his life is more interesting than that. And check him out for all the history of bands. He was a musician. He was a promoter. And more than that, now he's the editor of the Irish Examiner. USA, Paddy McCarthy, a good man to know here in the city. So what I meant that, I move on to a few actors I had as well on here. Nick Melanfi, I interviewed him about his acting career. He does a lot of acting down in the Irish Rep. His play was called The Smuggler, and that's still going on. You can track him down from my podcast, of course. And recently we did a podcast on Bloomsday, an event coming up in June, and we talked about that. That's all about James Joyce. Push up on your Bloomsday. It's an event, it's celebrated all over the world, actually, Bloomsday, all about James Joyce and Ulysses, okay? That's worthy of a mention, too. I'll go to health and wellness so we can keep keep rolling along. I'm trying to keep you within my time. So health and wellness, well, Elite Healers is owned and managed by Adam Cardona. And on those podcasts, I think we did a few. We number one, we discussed the benefits of massage, obviously stress control, blood pressure, management, pain, physical pain, and loosening up and how to get moving and how to get walking and the benefits of exercise and so on and so forth. Adam does a, a, a YouTube thing himself, giving out free advice on things you can do yourself. Like for example, if you have a migraine, he teaches you how to massage. Your temples, well, opening and closing your mouth, I have no problem with that because my podcast is called Good to Talk. So you can track Adam down on that one. He works out of Park Avenue here in New York. Ern Moore, I had on as well. She's a Reiki healer, Reiki practitioner, and she explained the benefits of Reiki healing, okay? That's a very interesting podcast in itself because it's, not everyone knows about Reiki healing, the benefits of Reiki healing, and what it can do to help your physical and mental well-being, I guess. David Cabrera was on. He's more like a, a psychic, I guess. And he does readings and that type of thing. But also explains, you know, maybe advice, I guess, story advice. I also had on Dr. Lisa Braun. She is a sex therapist. And for the gentleman, gentleman tuned in, she did explain to us how to find the G-spot. I thought the G-Spot was a vacation resort in Florida. I'm sure there are many G-Spots in Florida. I'll move on to some other miscellaneous ones. Like real estate, for example, I interviewed Michael Moran. He's a top real estate guy here in New York City. And he was very informative about the benefits of buying a condo, buying a co-op, the virtues of, if you can, buy rather than rent. Rent is dead money, as he explained. So tune in to Michael on that one. And if you need to contact him, you'll get his details on the podcast, okay? Another one I interviewed was a different topic again, uh, Architect Bolt is the name of the company. And the principal there is Ibrahim Greenwich. And we talked about how he was educated. Actually, he was educated for a while in Paris. And some big projects is coming up. We talked about uh, mistakes made in the past by architects with roads and tunnels and kind of simple design things you would wonder how they made the mistake in the first place and how they didn't know to correct it in the second place. If there's a problem, I always say, try and solve it. So let me move on to some more before I get to history. On the sports site, I interviewed Michael D. McAndrew. Happens to be my nephew. He works out of Mayo. He's a sports journalist. Very well-educated guy, very smart guy. He was able to correct me on some things, which is nice, especially on rugby. I had a perception that rugby was for the elite or doctors and lawyers, sons and all that. But Michael Deek corrected me and said, no, it's not for rednecks. Anyone can play rugby if they're trained properly and know how to play good. So Michael D. McAndrew, sports. We did talk a lot about Irish football and the GEA. We went into the history of Crow Park, the big stadium in Dublin, which holds about 90,000 people. We discussed how the names of the stadiums are named. After Sunday, Bloody Sunday, Hogan Stand, Pier Stand, and Hill 16, and so on and so forth. That's an interesting one. And Michael D is extremely good at his job as a sports journalist. Now, going back a little further, one of my first ones actually was to do with law, wills, trusts, and estates. And that was Lily in Kinchor. 
She's a lady here working out of Manhattan, lower Manhattan. And she explained very important topic to this one is making your will, knowing about uh, power of attorney, knowing about pulling the plug out, and everything to do with planning, planning for the end, I guess we should call it, yeah. There was a sad case there in the last year where a woman fell down the stairs backwards and died. And not sure she had a will made or not, but she ended up being buried in a golf course. And that's sad. I don't know if I would even bury a dog in a golf course. So moving along swiftly, I'm soon getting to go to Brian Layden. On the music note there, I did a podcast on St. Patrick's Day. And I had young Jimmy Grady on. He was 11 and a half. He's now 12, he tells me. And he sang a song called Caledonia, which is a Scottish song. Caledonia is a Scottish word for Scotland. And he sang it well. He's winning competitions. And then I, I met him again. We both was together. We did a eulogy for a friend that passed away. And he sang Parting Glass, which is a beautiful song too. And uh, I'll have Jimmy back again soon to sing a few more songs just to keep the singing alive, especially live music. I'll go to two books at the moment. I interviewed Henry Coyle from Mayo. He's a county councillor in Mayo and the Mayo County Council. And he wrote a great book about his father, Henry Coyle. Henry was a gun runner back in the day, politics again involved there. And Jerry put a lot of research into this. I mean, it looked like years of research. I mean, when I did this book for Stoney, a lot of research as well. So I know the work that goes into that. It's proofreading and typing and editing and format and all that. So Jerry did an excellent job on that book. Now, by contrast, recently had another guy on, Terence Slavin, and he has an article out called A Copper and a Dust Up, right? So his great great grandfather was a policeman back in the day in the around the time the Brooklyn Bridge was built, I guess. And he shot a guy, which seems to me to have been in self defense. And the nuts and bolts of this is that Terence Slavin, he seemed to feel a certain amount of guilt that his great great grandfather had shot somebody. And he, he went to look for the great great grandson of the guy that was shot, having to be a German guy. And he found him. It's interesting because if Jerry Coyle's book was a passion of love, this looked like to be a passion of frustration. If I may say so, my opinion is only my opinion. But what I liked about that story is is the aspect of forgiveness in it, where he met his equal and said he was sorry that his great great grandfather shot his great great grandfather. But it was a long time ago and it was self defense. The story is interesting in that it brings up nuances from this book about cops and corruption back then, like it was bad. And then we get to the aspects of shootings and so on, sort of, which is going on today, sadly. So I think I've covered all that. I'm going to move on now <clears throat> for the final part, and I'm sure I've left people out to deal with uh, history. So myself and Brian Layden, we, my historian guy, my friend too. We did a full podcast on Irish sports and Irish poetry. All the famous ones, you know, like Oscar Wilde, Brendan Behan, Patrick Kavanagh, uh, Yates, uh, James Joyce, of course, and the whole one of them. I was a bit tough on Patrick Kavanagh, if I may say so. Patrick Kavanagh was a poet from Monaghan, and I found growing up as a student that most of his poetry was very, very dreary and sad. Everything he seemed to write about was raining and dreary and picking up potatoes on the farm and Monaghan. Oh, it was like, you know, you need Prozac to read this shit. Anyways, when he moved to Dublin, he met a girlfriend for a while. And back in the day, then I explained this with Michael McMahonfrey, if you were a poet, like ladies of the day looked up to you as somebody being famous not realizing that most poets don't make much money and they're poor. And Kavanagh, pardon the pun, fit that bill. So when she dated him and realized that he didn't have a wallet in his pocket, she dumped him on Raglan Road. 
But Kevin had been resourceful and creative. He wrote a song called Ragnar Raglan Road, How She Dumped Him. And it, it's basically a love song about the girl that dumped him, you know, which is kind of ironic too. And no more than myself, Kavanaugh couldn't sing. But he was still smart enough to delegate. So I gave the song to Luke Kelly of the Dubliners. And you can Google on Raglan Road by Luke Kelly. And it turned out to be a famous, famous song. Well-known Irish song. Now, moving on to Brian Layden again. <clears throat> this year is the 25th year of the historic Good Friday Agreement. So myself and Brian went into great detail. We went back to, we went way back actually to at least 1916, the East Horizon. And then we moved on up to 1922 when Michael Collins was assassinated, right? And Michael Collins was the guy that was sent to London to create a treaty between the Irish and the English. And the deal was, okay, we keep 26 counties and UK can have the six counties, okay? That was the basic format of the deal. And when Collins came back from London after signing the deal, by the way, he was sent there by De Valera, who pops up in a few of my podcasts. I am a fan of Michael Collins. So I don't need to tell you what I am about De Valera, okay? De Valera was born here in New York City. And he, he, I think it's Spanish roots. His nickname was the Spanish Onion in the Irish Stew. And by the way, there's a podcast called Irish Stew, and they should do one about him. Getting back to Brian Layden and myself, we went into great detail to make comparisons between the two, the Michael Collins Agreement Treaty and the Good Friday Agreement. And the 1922, when de Valera didn't accept the Collins Agreement, that created a civil war after Michael Collins was assassinated. And you might only imagine what could have happened if he wasn't assassinated, how history would have changed. We wouldn't have had a civil war. Things would have changed. Who knows? And you could make the comparison, like John F. Kennedy, JFK, being assassinated in Dallas. If he wasn't assassinated, what would America be like? Would we be more progressive, I assume? Lots of things, but that's hard to fathom out because it's just something we don't know. Anyways, back to what I do know about myself and Brian Layden is we went into great, great detail to explain the Good Fight Agreement. We named all of the people that were involved in it, Senator George Mitchell, Bill Clinton, uh, Jerry Adams, Mark Guinness, Paisley, Albert Reynolds, Bertie Hearn. But it went on for a long time and a lot of change, changes in different governments, the Irish government, the English government, the Northern Ireland Assembly, Mo Morland. So it took a long time. So in fairness to Brian Layden, he gave a great compliment to the American participation. And he said when the British saw the American involvement in the Good Friday Agreement, they were more enthused to make an agreement, okay? So moving on from that, and then I'll come to a comment I have to make, is when Boris Johnson became Prime Minister. Before that, we had Maggie Thatcher. I don't want to insult her again, because I've insulted her many times on here. I'll leave her alone this time. Let her rest in peace, upside down. Um, is the comparisons we made with similarities. And then, okay, the, the involvement of Bill Clinton and the Americans into the agreement to, and George Mitchell, of course, a smoothie agreement. After all, 26 counties in the south of Ireland and six counties in the north of Ireland, okay? The south is majority Catholics. The north at the time was majority Unionists, okay? The, the agreement was signed on Good Friday with the intention and preface that when everybody is happy with United Ireland, that means that we all agree to it, and that's North and South to sign and say, yes, United Ireland is what we want. <clears throat> my discussion today and my theory is today, my visualization is today, that now is the time, okay? And I explained this somewhat with Brian Layden, on why now is the time. Well, the majority of people in the north of Ireland today versus unions are in the majority. 
according to the last election. I think because Boris Johnson decided to leave Europe and go back to keeping England as his England, he kind of forgot about Northern Ireland, that is part of the UK. He forgot about the Malvinas off the coast of Argentina, that that's his property too. So it's like owning property and not maintaining it, you know? That's not good for anybody. So in any event, I moved on with Brian Layden to say, I think the time is right now, and I mean now, for politicians on both sides, both sides, north and south, to get this done. And it's not that difficult, actually. I mean, I was in Berlin before the wall came down. I was in Berlin after the wall came down. And if you think of the Berlin Wall coming down, huge historic event, okay? Compare that to a United Ireland where we get back to six counties, and the 26 plus 6 is one island on the island of Ireland. So we're, we're an island. The benefits will be amazing. For everyone concerned, North and South, because the unions of the North are suffering as a result of leaving the UK, uh, leaving Europe, sorry. The UK left. The people in Northern Ireland did not want to leave Europe. So I think that's a very unfair advantage. But the people that had a vote in Northern Ireland to stay in Europe and were dragged out by the legs, tail courts, by Boris Johnson, they didn't want to leave, okay? Option number two would be United Ireland. Come, come back with us and you're part of Europe. We are a respected part of Europe. Ireland is probably one of the most respected members in all of Europe. The euro currency is important. Deals are made easy. Transactions are easy. Crossing borders are easy. Whereas now, unions and North have all this uh, financial and commercial hassle to trade with neighbors, with Europe, and all that goes with it, okay? So I mentioned the Berlin Wall. So a United Ireland will not be as traumatic or a crazy situation as the Berlin Wall collapsing. First of all, there's no wall to tear down. There's only a political border, which is not even a, a road or a sign, just saying you're crossing into Northern Ireland. And maybe you'd be lucky to see maybe a a policeman or a guy that's checking your what's in your vehicle or checking your ID or whatever. So no, no wall to tear down. It was always a porous border anyway. Any of my listeners that know a place called Cross McLean, its nickname is also known as Bandit Country. It's right on the border. Cross McLean is and was known for Bandit Country, for smuggling. Like I had the smuggling done on it too. I'm coming to whiskey in it. And it was known for that, anyways. So the smuggling went on between the north and the south. There's always a way around these things. And it's like, you know, illegal drugs, if you want them, you'll get them. If they're legalized, you get them too. But if they're not, you get them anyway. So my point is United Ireland is ready now. But as people like you and me, we need to talk about it more. And if you're connected to some Irish politicians, say you heard it here. There's no wall. There's no boundary. The time is right. All it takes is a vote. We don't have to go and shoot anybody. We don't have to threaten anybody. We need to be diplomatic and explain the benefits for everybody. In particular, the unionists need to be made aware of the benefits. It's difficult sometimes when you are against something for so many years and years and years that you don't want to see, you don't want to see the light but if you could only see the light your eyes would open and everything would be brighter you know and that's important i think so i'm hoping that you my listeners will help me with this one to educate inform people and be aware of the benefits of united ireland it's a win-win it's synergy all the way and i'll explain maybe more in my next podcast when i bring back Brian Layden. And you know what? Myself and Brian Layden, we could form United Ireland in two hours with a fool's cap piece of paper and talking about it. But it's more than that. Very much so. So for my final section here, 
I want to get away from the politics for a moment and the history, of course, which is very important to me. And I want to talk about alcohol. I did have, speaking of smuggling, I did have another lady on here. She's known as the Smuggling Nun. And she is someone, it, that's the name of the podcast. She is bringing Putching from Ireland into America. Putching, as you know, was illegal one time in Ireland. Now this is legal Putching. And we discussed the benefits of Putching and how, how it dates back to way, way, way back. I was corrected by a good friend of mine, Tony King, who is a listener here on my podcast. But I didn't mention Bushmills Whiskey, which is distilled in County Antrim, the north of Ireland. And I corrected myself later on another podcast. Yes, Bushmills is the oldest whiskey, perhaps in the world. And it's probably the best whiskey in the world. That's only my opinion. I will get contradicted in that one. I did move on then and I spoke to Meg Ryan, not the actress, of course. But I like Meg Ryan because she's a smart girl. And she's promoting three different whiskies, at least, and a gin. Some gin in this. From West Cork, and the West Cork whiskey is, was created by three gentlemen, two fishermen, and a scientist. I like the science. That's important to have it in there. Now, come to science, it's very important. So, Meg explained all that, and that's a good one. Meg, Meg in Rhine, West Cork Distillers, and she also they're doing a gin. And a drop of gin is okay. It kept the queen alive for a long, many, good many years. And when she gave it up, she kept the bucket. That's sad to hear. So I leaned on another topic. Uh, I interviewed Sergei Yanovich. He is a scientist here in Song Catering. And we had a good talk on cancer research, and especially brain cancer. And that's an interesting topic. I'll let you look that up in your own way. It's cancer research by Sergei. He did sing a song. I think I can sing better. Anyways, finally, I'm going to mention Oliver O'Connell. And Oliver is from County Clare, and his podcast was called A Journey, Not a Destination. And what I found most interesting on his podcast is that he is a cancer, cancer survivor. And he explained this in detail, how he was diagnosed with cancer, and now he had... Um, terminal cancer and then we were supposed to go and he thought it was the end of the end of the end and how his belief in prayer and the power of prayer and God uh, and then he explains that in a journey not a destination I'll go back to Sergey for a minute because the cancer guy from Sloan Catering because I did research that a little bit with Sergey and I did ask him about another gentleman I met who had survived many many all types different types of cancer and the guy put his belief in the scientists, of course, the doctors, and God. And I asked the scientists not to be a referee. Where does God come into it? And Sergei said, well, if you believe and have a belief, and you're diagnosed with cancer, and your belief is strong, and whatever the belief is, it could be God, it could be whoever your God is, right? You have a better chance of surviving longer. Your immune system will, will be greatly improved. Whereas if you throw in the towel and say, that's it, you know, I'm done. Well, chances are you're done. Okay, so th that's a reflection on all of my podcasts. Not all, most of them. I forgot to mention, I had a nurse on here, Dr. Lisa. I had another lady on, Kate, that does editing for books and films and stuff. Oh, I did a podcast. Ron Lewis is a photographer with the National Geographic newspaper. Alex Kovacheva is a pianist, and Steve Shaman was a swing time band, I got him. Kyle Olson is a guy that recycles wooden pallets and makes them into wood mulch for your garden. And Angela Santiago is a heat heating and air conditioning guy. Ryan Tracy is a psychologist. Claire Hickey ran the marathon. Christian Parker is a guy that has an organization called Gay and Sober. It's an organization for Gay and lesbian people, it's like a, a, a Alcoholics Anonymous, okay? And it's a worldwide organization, very creative, unique type of uh, situation. But there are gay people that are alcoholics and they're 
keep together an alcoholic sort of guy. Janelle Villers is a, is a travel agent. Katie Rose is the editor. Diana Harkin, I did mention drink, but Diana Harkin has a wine with no alcohol. In it. What good is that? Tom Sanchez is from the United Print Group. He does promote the products. I did leave out one important one. Not you, George. We talked about cybersecurity. This is a serious topic. And this is a number of months ago I interviewed him. And cybersecurity is where people hack into your situation. And you'll know from the news in the last number of months, the Pentagon was hacked. Today, the Australian uh, government was hacked. Their finance department or their department of finance was hacked. So you can understand the importance of cybersecurity. I did ask Matthew George on that podcast. Of course, it, it, they do everything to secure everything. And my big question was, what if there's a fox in the house? Well, what if there's a fox in the house? Well, you're going to have to go and watch that podcast, aren't you, to find out. So I'll finish off today. If you like my podcast, subscribe. Hit the like button. My email is jhfornews at yahoo.com. If you know a friend or somebody of interest, if you think is worthy of their story being told, everybody has a story, and I'm willing to listen. But I do like to talk. I'm going to say goodbye. and Sonawale.